Hi there and welcome to Bustanet. This scouting guide is brought to you by One Football App. They are sponsoring our shows this month on Bustanet. I want to thank them very much. Uh, links to the app are below in case you're interested. Trust me, it's not a bad application. Now, um, today's show is all about scouting. Now, I'm not going to cover how you scout academies, right? There's a strategy that you should be using for that, but that's going to be the focus of another show because I don't want to, comp I want to compartmentalize scouting, essentially. On today's show, I'm going to take a look at broad strategies you can use for scouting so that you manage the cost, especially for big clubs and definitely for the LLM club. The 18.2 patch sees some interesting changes being made to scouting. These are all quality of life changes that I'm really happy to see in the game. The first thing that you'll notice is when you go to the scouting center, the white cards now, they look a bit different. There's an add as transfer target and add to shortlist tick boxes. This is more different from the previous cards that we had on the in the game, which literally, you know, if you, you clicked on one of those, you know, the card would just disappear and we couldn't do anything with the card anymore. And you see some of the old cards in the video later because uh, you notice that this is quite a change. And uh, I left them in the video because this is meant to be a scouting guide. You just please ignore the old video, uh, old scouting cards, but it'll be good to have these on the video because then at least you can see the differences pre and post. Now, the other change that has been made is uh, there's a pop-up box now in the scouting center. So if you decide to keep scouting someone, a pop-up box will come up and this box will warn you that the player, now he may be within your range, uh, your scouting range, doesn't mean that uh, scouting is free. Going out to scout him, it's not going to become a function of the number of games that you spend scouting him. So the longer you scout the chap, the higher the cost go up. And this is great because the, I, in this video, I actually explained that scouting over time adds to cost. And there are strategies that I deal with later in the video uh, explaining how you can manage those costs in the game and actually make scouting a lot more enjoyable. The third change that as I have done is very interesting because now the number of assignments he can handle at the same time is a function of his judging ability attributes. So the higher those attributes are, the more assignments he can handle at the same time. So the, if he's got really high scores in PA and um, CA, judging PA and judging CA, then he can handle up to eight assignments at one time. Now, if he's got really poor ratings, then he can only handle up to three. So this is going to be really important for you to understand, um, you know, how you can, how long it might take a scout to get those assignments finished. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of the show where I deal with strategies I use with big clubs and small clubs when it comes to scouting effectively. Let's set the stage first. Scouting prior to FM18 was a major exploit. Simply, there was no cost to your scouting. You could send your scouts all over the world and you could be a non-league side and you know you could be lower league side and you, you could find a five-star player in a jungle in the middle of nowhere and then scout him and bring him to your club and the next thing you know, you got a superstar. It was a joke. So it was a major exploit, to be honest with you. And what happened in FM18 was we needed to, the SI needed to put a cost to scouting and I'm totally f in favor of the new scouting model. I love it. I enjoy it. This is one of the parts, one part of the game that I totally and absolutely like. The only thing I don't like about scouting is this stupid white card. <laughs> That's about it. I mean, the fact that these cards come out like, you know, they can't give me a spreadsheet. It's a bit of a bummer, but never mind. It's something that I, you know, we've learned, I've learned to live with. Now, the first thing that we need to understand when it comes to scouting is, okay, how does it now work? It's totally different. Okay, the first thing we need to know is that there is now a monthly cost towards scouting. You have a budget that is um, uh, called a scouting budget. Now, your scouting budget can... The, at the start of season, most clubs, top clubs have 720k as a scouting budget. It's more like a yardstick. Right now, you can go out there. You can change your scouting budget very easily by adjusting, taking money from your transfer budget. So if you are a club with a large kitty, then really scouting shouldn't be a problem for you because you never will never run out of money. And if you're a small non-league side, yes, then the challenge begins. So the scouting budget, how does this get used? It's very simple. When you, when you go down to your player search tab, you'll have a senior package. Now, that senior package that you use, every month, a fee 
if you're paying for a European package, we've got 15k here. We got a Portuguese package is 1.5k here, which means total 17k. Now 17k is the cost per month. That cost is going to be taken out of your scouting budget. So if you don't do anything else, and you just go out there and you tell um, your your director of football, you give him a general focus and you tell him go out there, find me some chaps and come back. Right now, if all they do is come back and they don't scout further, then your scouting budget will get knocked off 17k every month. So that's what that's what's going to happen. If you decide that along the way, by the way, you've decided, mm, I like this Carolinity, I want to find out more about him, and you tell them to keep scouting. If they keep scouting and they start developing, they, the, they keep carry on scouting, then the costs start going up. This starts the costs start piling up what i typically do with my players is this the moment you have like enough of enough to see their attribute level like here we got musa dembele we can see enough now the range may not be good 7 to 11 but if you if you're the sort of player that says okay fine i'm i want my strikers to have a uh, between, I need them to at least get 13 for uh, off the ball. Then you look at him, it's between 12 to 15. That's not too bad. His acceleration is half decent. His finishing is 12 to 16, 14 to 17. He's 21 years old. I might go, all right, fine, enough. I don't need to scout him anymore. I'll just add him to the shortlist. What we're doing here is we're building up our shortlist. If you see something like this, 65%, what does this mean? There's a rating that a scout gives you. That's his recommendation level. The recommendation level is a function of uh, his assessment of the player's potential ability, current ability, plus some other factors that, as I don't want to be very, you know, they don't want to give you too much information here, which is fair enough. Here we know him. When we see something like this, if he's 65%, it means that he has close to two stars two to three stars right so it's it's the, the coaches aren't exactly sure but if you you what you can do you, you can see that his potential ability right now is three stars his current ability is about two stars it means that he has room to develop what you would do with a player like this if you're not sure click on him again look at martin calderon he's 18 years old we have a goal here of only looking for youngsters and if you if you see that Okay, his attribute range is still half decent. Uh, his natural fitness is 9 to 13, pace is 13 to 17. Um, his composure, what we're doing here is looking at ranges. Now, if you're very comfortable with doing that, then you can add him to the shortlist. If you're not, keep scouting him. But remember that once the numbers come back, you don't need to get them to 100% knowledge level because the moment he hits 100% knowledge level, you're in trouble because the costs go up. You start eating up into costs. That's one thing about scouting, right? So you, you don't need to scout them till they're 100%. What about the options below here? We've got get analyst, keep scouting, discard, acknowledge, remove from shortlist, make offer, and add as transfer target. The main one you notice is discard. Discard remove him, removes him. You don't want to know about him anymore. And he, basically, that's it. He may still be in a shortlist though. All right. Now, but you're basically telling your scouts, don't bother with him anymore. Um, I don't want you to carry on scouting this player. If you acknowledge a player, um, you just are removing this card from the scouting center that's all you can still you can still leave him like here we have him we have leo we've got 56 percent knowledge if i look at his attributes i go like okay he's a fullback and what's my favorite thing about fullbacks acceleration that's <laughs> why i love i love the fact that they can bomb down the flanks well he's got off the ball he's got fairly decent decisions he's 21 years old i'll just add him he's already added to the shortlist i'll acknowledge him that means we don't we don't care on scouting him so Dario Bonetto, 27 years old. I'm not interested in 27 year old, old players. That's it, okay? Th that removes that list. But why was my short list so short? If you go to preferences, I set my minimum recommendation level at 80. Means when the scouts come in, they give me at least um, players that are high on the you know on the radar. Now you can you can sort by recommendation or you can sort by uh, and you can ask your scouts to come back with a minimum recommendation level during the transfer window i generally what i do is during the transfer window i want reports to come in every two weeks and i have something like maybe 50 entries and then once the transfer window is once the transfer window is done i may not be interested i i want one every month i just need about 20 entries now this is the interesting part and i please let me mute my phone because somebody's going completely loco and it's my wife uh what we want to do with our scouting packages is very simple 
we want to observe the shortlist. So once you get a shortlist going like this, this is this is going to be the most important thing. Okay, you want to develop a strong shortlist. Scouting is now an art in FMF 18. You essentially have two ways to play it. If you're a rich club, you don't really have many issues. But if you're a struggling club, like an LLM club, then how I approach it is very different. I scout at the start of preseason. I look for my targets, I add them to my shortlist. Then once I've done that, I look at my packages, I lower them to the lowest possible package. Then I take a timeout because I've already added my players to the shortlist. If I need to scout them some more, then I'll just wait until like there's like four months in the season because by, you know, at the start of the season, I probably have firmed out my starting 11. Then with four months left in the season, I make a decision. I look at my scouting budget and my remaining amount. If I don't have enough left in my remaining amount, I transfer it from the budget itself, by transfer budget. If I have nothing, then it's I'm, you know, too bad for me. But the goal here is to maintain some form of a scouting budget uh, with about four months left in the season. So if you're an LLM side, you don't want to wipe out your scouting budget at the start of the season. You want to keep something around for the last four months because that's when you're going to be looking for targets for the following season. If you have something left over from the transfer budget, with four months left in the season, you want to transfer some money from your transfer budget and beef up your scouting budget. Then you go out there, look for more targets, and then you add them to your shortlist. See, by doing this, you are maximizing the return on your own scouting. When it comes to lower league scouting, it's a bit of a challenge, but it's actually kind of easy if you, if you come up with a plan. Now, here, the first thing you want to do is you want to get a good ass man who's got good judging and playability. Why? The lower league, the lower uh, the level of football you're in, the higher the chance you're going to be taking players on trial. So the moment these players come through the door on trial, they don't have a contract because we, honestly, you know, lower league football, I can't afford to play transfer fees for these players. So they come on trial. I give them a chance. A, same thing. I did the same thing with Columbus Crew in the MLS. I have done the same thing with so many clubs. Uh, in fact, with lower league football, chances are I take most of my players on trial all the way to the championship. Yes, you can do that all the way to the championship. There's no issue with that. Even when I got promoted from the championship into the premiership, I still use players. I still got players on free transfers. So uh, your your strategy has to be very simple. So get yourself an ass man who's got good judging playability. It comes in very handy because then you'll be able to develop a database for, for all the players that have come through your club on trial. So these are all the players that have come through my club on trial for Kingstonian. There's quite a large number of players, including one where they absolutely want me to get this player, Kane Haines, Hainsman, who's suppo supposedly to supposedly very, very good. They want me to sign him whatever the price and he's, <laughs> he's available on the free. So it's... it's the, my scout, my assistant manager is screaming in my ear telling me go get this player and what I will do is I will add him to my shortlist indefinitely and then when I go to my shortlist I'll have a whole bunch of players on my shortlist when, I, when I'm hit when I'm close towards the end of the season and if I want to start um, ex looking at players I want to um, if I'm looking at strengthening my squad for uh, the push for promotion I might add players or when I hit the end of the season and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, I need better players for the next uh, uh, tier of competition, then I start looking at my shortlist again. So this is an approach that you can take when you go for LLM scouting. You want to be very, very judicious about the, your uh, timing for your scouting projects. And you also want to learn how to balance your scouting budget because you know some of you might have transfer budgets. So you need to time your scouting. So how do you time your scouting? You do it at the start of the season. You do it like three to four months before the end of the regular season. Then uh, you use, you wipe out. You want to wipe out your scouting budget because can you I, this has happened to me before. I, I was sitting on two hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars for my scouting budget in the MLS, right? And I waited until two months, uh, the last month, and I wanted to go out there and get myself some players. I wanted to scout some players. Then I forgot I don't have that big a scouting team, and I realized, oh shit, I made a mistake. Then um, they replaced that two hundred and ten thousand scouting budget with one hundred and forty-seven thousand seven hundred and forty-seven thousand scouting budget. Basically, they knocked off like sixty thousand from my scouting budget. I was like, "Oh God, my timing is bad." So, what you want to do is you also want to time this. Uh, you want to game it. Basically, you're gaming it. And that's all you're doing. So, what you're gonna do is you're gonna develop. The shortlist is really important. So you, what you want to do is you want to build that shortlist up. You want to be thinking to yourself, okay, what kind of players do I need? 
in next season if I get promoted? Or what kind of players do I need to get next season if I'm in the same league? So if I don't get promoted this season, then Kane Haysman here, he might become a very, very promising player that I can put into my team. He's a half, in fact, for he's probably better than any other wide midfielder that we have or attacking midfielder that we have at the moment. <laughs> yeah, that, that's Kingstonian at the moment. So I hope that you found this scouting guide handy and you, you, it gives you some ideas on how you can incorporate different strategies into um, scouting, you know, when you want to add uh, some depth into your squad. And if you have any questions you want to find me, you can always look me up on Twitter at Bustanet or addicted to FM.com, my website. Once again, I'd like to thank my patrol for their continued support of this channel. You make these kind of shows possible for the rest of the community.